जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय गोपी जन बल्लभ गिरिवर धारे जय गोपी जन बल्लभ गिरिवर धारे यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन शोदानंद या मुनतीर वन या मुनतीर वन चारे जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव राधा माधव राधे जय राधा गिरिधारी राधा गिरिधारी राधे राध प्रभु पान प्रभु पान प्रभु पान जय जय प्रभु पान जय जय प्रभु पान प्रभु पान प्रभु पान जय जय प्रभु पान जय जय गुरुदेव 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 जय जय गुरुदेव प्रभुपाद की अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की निताई गौर प्रेमानंदे हरे कृष्ण थैंक यू वेरी मच डियर डिवोटीज फॉर काइंडली बीइंग प्रेजेंट हियर टुडे आई एम एस्पेशली थैंकफुल टू Shri Shri Radha Giridhari for kindly opening their doors and uh, to all the devotees in the temple. I am very thankful Dravida Prabhu for
kindly extending an invitation. I am thankful to Ganga Narayan Prabhu and uh, Varshana Mataji at whose place I am staying. And also thankful to Govinda who has his birthday today. So many happy returns of the day, dear Govinda. <laughs> so, um, it is our Shishta Parampara, a tradition established by our Acharyas that we begin with Mangala Charan, auspicious invocations. So I will chant some auspicious invocations and then we will see text 25 of chapter 14 of the 5th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Dasmai Shri <coughs> Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Soyam Rupah Kadamahiyam Dadatisva Padantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutapadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha Namaha Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Nitinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaurat Vishenamaha He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrashabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpata Rubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhya Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 5, Chapter 14, Text number 25 So since this is not a verse, this is a paragraph so there is no meter to sing it. So I will recite the paragraph. Kindly repeat after me. Kvachicca Shita Vatadi Aneka Adhidaivika Bhautika Atmiyanam Dashanam Pratinivarane Akalpo Duranta Chintaya Vishanna Aste Synonyms Kvachet Sometimes Cha Also Shita Vata Adi Such as cold and strong wind Aneka, various. Adhidaivika, created by the demigods. Bhautika, Adhibhautika, created by other living beings. Atmiyanam, Adhyatmika, created by the body and mind. Dashanam, 
of conditions of misery prati nivarane in the counteracting akalpaha unable duranta very severe chintaya by anxieties vishanna maros aste he remains translation and purport by his divine grace abhay charanavrinda bhakti vedanta swami shila prabhupad translation being unable to protect himself from the threefold miseries of material existence the conditioned soul becomes very morose and lives a life of lamentation these threefold miseries are miseries suffered by mental calamity at the hands of the demigods such as freezing wind and scorching heat miseries offered by other living entities and miseries arising from the mind and body themselves purport the so called happy materialistic person is constantly having to endure the threefold miseries of life called adhidaivika adhyatmika and adhibhautika actually no one can counteract these threefold miseries all three may assail one at one time or one misery may be absent and the other present thus the living entity is full of anxiety fearing misery from one side or the other the conditioned soul must be disturbed by at least one of these three miseries there is no escape jagat guru shri prabhupad ki jai मुखम करोति वाचलम पंगुम लंघयते गिरिम यत्कृपाम तमहम वंदे श्री गुरु दीनतारण सो वंस अगेन थैंक यू डियर डिवोटीज फॉर काइंडली बीइंग प्रेजेंट हियर टुडे इट इज सेड पंचभि सह स्थातव्यम गंतव्यम पंचभि सह पंचभि सह वक्तव्यम न दुखम पंचभि सह पंचभि सह स्थातव्यम इफ यू वॉन्ट टू स्टे एट एनी प्लेस स्टे विथ एट लीस्ट फाइव पीपल बिकॉज इफ यू हैव अ क्वारल विथ वन पर्सन यू हैव फोर अदर पीपल टू स्पीक टू गंतव्यम पंचभि सह इफ यू वॉन्ट टू ट्रैवल समवेयर ट्रैवल विथ एट लीस्ट फाइव पीपल बिकॉज इफ यू फॉल इन टू सम डिफिकल्टी देर विल बी फाइव पीपल टू प्रोटेक्ट यू पंचभि सह वक्तव्यम एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू स्पीक समथिंग speak in an assembly of at least 5 people na dukham panchabihi sah so if at least 5 people are present then there is no unhappiness but there are more than 10 devotees present here so it is all happiness for me thank you dear devotees for being present here so in this chapter bhava tavi the forest of material existence is being destroyed uh, is described in great detail and it is shri jad bharat who is describing to maharaj rahugan and in this particular paragraph he is describing the three types of miseries which are being suffered by every living entity first is known as adhi daivika adhi daivika means they are adhi deva adhi deva means they are under the control of the devatas or they are under the control of the various deities who are presiding within the universe and also within the body sometimes the living entity thinks that there is nobody in charge of this universe and he conveniently forgets that actually in his own body all the gods are in charge of the bodily functions the living entity thinks i am independent i can do whatever i want with my body but sometimes when a particular devata or god stops cooperating with his body then he may become paralyzed and even though he may want to lift his hand but since his hand is paralyzed he is not able to lift his hand so sometimes he suffers from adhi daivika adhi daivika means miseries which have been bestowed by the various devatas or the various gods now these devatas are not only outside in the nature like shri prabhupad quotes in the purport he says due to heat and cold 
conditions which are created by the devatas but they are also within one's body so sometimes even though one may not have external weather conditions as miseries but internal bodily conditions are definitely creating trouble for the living entities and many of these body conditions such as paralysis or such as forgetfulness they are caused by the various devatas who are acting as in charge of the various bodily functions for example in the stomach there is agni agni means fire that helps in digestion it is known as jathar agni jathar agni is the fire of digestion now shri prabhupada often said that sometimes a person has man the jathar agni very low fire of digestion such a person is not able to digest food easily so it is because the presiding deity agni is not cooperating with his bodily functions and this is due to his previous karma so similarly some people have tivra agni they have their fire of digestion is very strong so they may eat and immediately within an hour they may feel hungry again so that is also possible so these are adi devika adi devika means they are bestowed by the various gods then there are adhi bhautika adhi bhautika means they are adhi bhuta bhuta means other living entities so adhi bhautika refers to those miseries which are bestowed by other living entities in the material world we are not alone we are staying with many living entities and as soon as there are two living entities they will definitely give some trouble to each other 100% assured no matter there may be good friends but they will definitely give some trouble to each other if they stay with each other for a prolonged duration of time what to speak of two human beings even animals and birds etc also give us various miseries so these are known as adhi bhautika sometimes we get stung by a bee so that is adhi bhautika caused by other living entities sometimes there is a tree and due to winds a heavy branch of the tree may fall upon us so this is also adhi bhautika so many such miseries are there and finally if no other source of misery is there then our own mind is a sufficient source of misery that is known as adhyatmika adhyatmika means adhi atma atma means here means the mind so the mind itself is a constant source of misery for all of us because the mind is so conditioned that it always thinks of negativities it is always thinking of all the negative possibilities that can arise and it constantly keeps us worried if we think about it even yesterday some of us may be worried about so many things you know some of us may be worried will i be able to reach my office in time will i be able to eat nicely will i be able to reach back in time will there be traffic or not so these miseries are caused by our own mind but today those miseries have no value because yesterday has already gone today those miseries have absolutely no value so if we ask our mind was it worth it taking all those miseries so the mind will say well today is a fresh set of challenges so today i am going to take some more miseries today i am going to give you some more anxiety so every day the mind is putting us into more and more miseries this is known as adhyatmika so jad bharat here says that everybody is suffering from these three types of miseries in this material world and especially uh in kali yuga these miseries are multiplied manifold in my childhood i studied a sanskrit verse which was describing the condition in kali yuga so it says that bhupala nij dharma karma rahita vipra kumar gerata bharya bhartri virodhini prabhu rapi krodhe na purna sada ha kashtam khalu vartate kali yuge dhanyanaraye mrita 
so it says the earth is devoid of all good minerals and medicines in kali yuga and the kings they are all ruffians the governments they are all ruffians you may think i have voted for the correct person but in 4 years we find out that the very person we voted for also turned out to be very disappointing bhupala nija karma dharma rahita <clears throat> all the leaders are devoid of their dharma vipraha the brahmanas who are supposed to guide the society kumar ge rata they have also taken to you know a deviated path in life they are no longer following the principles of religion prabhur api krodhena purna sada and when we go to office our bosses are also always giving us anxieties ha kashtam khalu vartate kali yuge alas how many miseries are there in kali yuga dhanya nara only one category of people are happy in kali yuga ye mrita those who are dead only the dead are happy in kali yuga so this is the condition in kali yuga dhanya nara ye mrita glorious are those who died that is what we can say about this particular age and all these miseries if we ask what is the source of these miseries so there is an intricate system in nature known as karma and this karma is although it's a very simple word and it has now made its way into the english dictionary originally a sanskrit word it has now made its way into the english dictionary because it is so commonly used so karma is seemingly easy to understand but when when we get into the details of karma it becomes very intricate and shri krishna says in the bhagavad gita gahana karmano gati that it is very difficult to understand the intricacies of karma karma is mainly divided into three types and our acharyas have explained the three types of karma now i'll try to explain these three types of karma and how they affect the living entity the first type of karma is known as sanchita karma sanchita means stockpiled stockpiled karma is known as sanchita karma this is the karma which has been with us since time immemorial ever since we entered into the material world we have been accumulating karma all of it is stockpiled this is known as sanchita karma or stockpiled karma this is the first category of karma and from this stockpile of karma a little bit of it is taken and in the current body it is given so right from the moment we take birth up to the moment of death it has been it is only a small fraction of sanchit karma and it has been given to us and this variety of karma is known as prarabdha karma so that which we are definitely going to enjoy or suffer in this life is known as prarabdha karma so it begins from the moment of birth and it goes all the way till our death and then there is the third type of karma it is known as kriyaman karma kriyaman means new karma that we are creating in this life so that new karma will mostly be added to the stockpile sanchit karma and some of it we will face in this life itself so these are three types of karma the acharyas give a wonderful analogy to explain these three types of karma they say that suppose there is a bow man who has a bow and arrow he has a quiver of arrows so he goes into the forest he takes an arrow and he aims and he shoots the arrow and after shooting the arrow he sits down and he starts crafting a new arrow so the acharyas say that the stockpile of arrows behind him is like sanchita karma stockpiled karma the arrow which he took out and which he shot and the arrow which is definitely going to hit its target nobody can stop it midway that is known as prarabdha karma karma which we are facing in this life and the arrow which he crafts after that is known as kriyaman karma that arrow that karma which we are currently 
committing in this life this will be either added to our stockpile or it will be added to our current you know prarabdha karma so these are three types of karma amongst these three types of karma two are very easy to get rid of if we follow various processes of spiritual life in bhagavad gita various processes of spiritual life are mentioned first is known as karma yoga the first lesson which krishna gives to arjuna initially krishna ends up speaking about gyana yoga for shortly arjuna is not able to appreciate it krishna changes tracks in the second chapter from gyana yoga he changes to karma yoga so the very first message which arjuna is able to appreciate in bhagavad gita is karma yoga what is karma yoga karma yoga means you perform your prescribed karma according to your varna and ashrama your specific situation in the society and whatever results you get out of that you offer unto the supreme lord this is known as karma yoga very simple karma yoga means whatever activities according to our inclination according to our position in society we are performing we should offer to the supreme lord this is known as karma yoga what is gyana yoga gyana yoga means give up all varieties of karma and inquire into the absolute truth known as brahma that is known as gyana yoga and the third yoga is bhakti yoga bhakti yoga means you give up pursuit for karma and gyana yoga and you fully surrender yourself unto the supreme personality of godhead and worship him using the nine fold method of shravanam kirtanam etc this is known as bhakti yoga these three main yogas have been described there are also some other yogas such as ashtanga yoga described in bhagavad gita but these three are the main yogas described in the bhagavad gita using these three yogas especially karma yoga and gyana yoga we can get rid of our karma for example if we perform karma yoga now every new activity that i am performing if i decide today that from today onwards i will perform karma yoga so every activity that i am performing at the end of the day i can say whatever i perform today oh lord i dedicate unto you this is karma yoga and the fruits of the activity also not only the activity but the fruits of the activity should also be dedicated to bhagavan so that is known as karma yoga nowadays there is a mistaken understanding of karma yoga that karma yoga simply means to give up the results but to give up the results unto whom that is not often specified sometimes people say to give up unto the society is karma yoga no the acharya specify parameshwar arpanam that to give up unto the supreme lord that actually is karma yoga because if we give to the society we satisfy certain people but tasmin tushte jagat tushtam by satisfying krishna all living entities in the universe are satisfied and therefore we should give it unto the supreme personality of godhead so that is authentic karma yoga as described in the shastras then a certain person he may rise above the level of karma yoga and then he may become a gyana yogi gyana yogi means he is tired of performing so much karma in each and every life so he wants to inquire into what is the absolute truth and somebody tells him the absolute truth is he reads in shastra absolute truth is brahma so he has brahma jigyasa what is brahma so then he reads in the vedan sutra janma adhyasya yatah from whom brahma is that entity from which the creation etc of this universe takes place so then he becomes a gyana yogi so as a karma yogi his current karma is destroyed why because he is offering his current karma to the supreme lord so that will not give him any result but he still has a stockpile that is sanchit karma previous karma and he still has his prarabdha which he is destined to suffer so the new karma which he is crafting he is offering to the supreme lord but the stockpile of karma and the karma which he is supposed to enjoy or suffer in this life 
दोज कर्मज आर नॉट डिस्ट्रॉयड फॉर हिम नेक्स्ट इज द ज्ञान योगी द ज्ञान योगी ही मेडिटेट्स ऑन ब्रह्मन एंड ही ऑल्सो मेक श्योर दैट हीज लाइफ स्टाइल इज एक्सट्रीमली प्योर ही गेट्स रीड ऑफ ऑल द प्रीवियस बैड हैबिट्स ही मेडिटेट्स ऑन ब्रह्मन ही चैंट्स वेरियस मंत्रस फॉर अटेनिंग सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन वन सच मंत्र फॉर द ज्ञानी इज नोन एज हमस मंत्र हमस इज नोन एज सो हम हम सह दिस मंत्र मैनी ज्ञान योगी इज चैंट सो वॉट इज सो हम सो हम मीन्स सह मीन्स दैट अहम आई एम आई एम दैट ब्रह्मन एंड इफ यू सी सिलेबल वाइज सह अहम एंड इफ यू रिपीट इट बिकम्स हम सह सो द ऑपोजिट ऑफ सो हम इज हम सह हम सह मीन्स स्वान सो सो हम आई एम दैट हम सह परम हम सह आई एम दैट लिबरेटेड सोल सो हम हम सह एंड देन इट इज सेड इन अमॉंग्स द ज्ञान योगीज दैट दिस मंत्र इज अ जपा जप अ जपा जप मीन्स यू डोंट रियली नीड टू चैंट इट एवरीबडी इज चैंटिंग इट वाय बिकॉज वेन यू ब्रीद इन साइड इट मेक्स द साउंड सो and when you breathe outside it makes the sound hum i hope you are so so hum so hum so every living entity is gradually they say is turning towards brahman because they are indirectly chanting this mantra so hum hum sah but even amongst the gyanis there are two types of karma are destroyed first is their sanchit karma their previous stockpile of karma is thoroughly destroyed because they are studying the upanishads they are studying vedanta sutra they are studying all the literature and they are practicing brahmacharya they are practicing austerity so all their previous karma is destroyed and they are not engaging in any new karma because gyana yogis it is required that you should give up karma so they do not create any new karma so two types of karma are destroyed for the gyana yogi first is the sanchit karma the stockpiled karma and second is the karma which is newly created because it doesn't create any new karma but there is one variety of karma which is not destroyed for them that is prarabdha karma prarabdha means the karma which they have to suffer or enjoy in this life that karma is still not destroyed so then comes the bhakti yogi and the acharyas say that bhakti yoga is such a process that it can destroy all varieties of karma including prarabdha karma it can even stop the arrow midway even after the arrow has been shot so that capability is present in bhakti yoga shri rupa goswami in his literature namashtakam he has given a very beautiful verse this is verse number 4 of namashtakam He says, "Yad Brahma Sakshat Kriti Nishtha Yapi Vinasha Maya Ti Vinana Bhogair Apaiti Nama Spurane Natatte Prarabdha Karmeti Virauti Veda." Shri Rupa Goswami in Namastakam, there are eight verses dedicated to holy name. so he says yad brahma sakshat kriti nishtha yapi somebody may be brahma sakshat kriti nishtha somebody may have nishtha firm faith in realizing brahman rupa goswami says very respected people they are very respected people they will destroy their two types of karma that is their sanchit stockpiled karma and their kriyaman their current karma which they will create in this life two types of karma will be destroyed but vinashamayati vinana bhogai but there is one type of karma even for the gyanis which will not be destroyed without bhoga without suffering or enjoying it but dear holy name shri rupa goswami says apaiti nama spurane na tatte but simply by chanting with faith and love the names of krishna hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare hare 
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे श्री रूप गोस्वामी से प्रारब्ध कर्म थी इवन प्रारब्ध कर्म दैट विच इज मोस्ट डिफिकल्ट टू डिस्ट्रॉय इज ऑल्सो डिस्ट्रॉयड विरौति वेद द वेद इज लाउडली प्रोक्लेम दिस सो इवन प्रारब्ध कर्म द कर्म फॉर विच वी वर सपोज टू सफर इन दिस लाइफ दैट कर्म इज ऑल्सो डिस्ट्रॉयड ओनली बाय वन प्रोसेस एंड दैट प्रोसेस इज नोन एज भक्ति योग नाउ सर्टनली मेनी क्वेश्चन आर आइज सिंपली बाय सेंग दैट प्रारब्ध कर्म इज डिस्ट्रॉयड वी मे हैव मेनी डाउट्स इफ आवर प्रारब्ध कर्म द कर्म फॉर विच वी आर सपोज टू एन्जॉय और सफर इन दिस लाइफ इज डिस्ट्रॉयड हाउ इज इट दैट डिवोटीज आर स्टील एक्सपीरियंसिंग हैप्पीनेस और डिस्ट्रेस इन देयर बॉडीज डिवोटीज डू एक्सपीरियंस हैप्पीनेस और डिस्ट्रेस एंड द आचार्यज हैव क्लियरली एक्नोलेज येस इट इज अ फैक्ट दैट डिवोटीज डू एक्सपीरियंस हैप्पीनेस और डिस्ट्रेस बट द डिस्ट्रेस इज हैविली मिनिमाइज फॉर द डिवोटीज वाय बिकॉज द डिवोटीज टेक टू द पाथ ऑफ भक्ति योग मेनी ऑफ देयर प्रीवियस बैड हैबिट्स आर रेक्टिफाइड इन द प्रैक्टिस ऑफ भक्ति योग बिकॉज ऑफ विच द मिजरीज विच दे वर गोइंग टू सफर आर हैविली रिड्यूस्ड इवन इन दिस लाइफ एंड इफ फ्रॉम टाइम टू टाइम सम मिजरीज अराइज दोज मिजरीज आर नॉट बिकॉज ऑफ देयर कर्म द डिवोटीज डू नॉट सफर बिकॉज ऑफ देयर कर्म इन द कमेंट्री देर इज अ टेक्स्ट नोन एज भक्ति रसामृत सिंधु इन भक्ति रसामृत सिंधु देर इज अ वंडरफुल कमेंट्री रिटर्न बाय आवर प्रीवियस आचार्य श्रील रूप गोस्वामी बाय श्रील विश्वनाथ चक्रवर्ती ठाकुर तो श्रील विश्वनाथ चक्रवर्ती ठाकुर इन द कमेंट्री टू भक्ति रसामृत सिंधु से इज अ वंडरफुल थिंग भक्तानाम सामान्य प्रारब्ध नाशेपी ऑल दो प्रारब्ध कर्म द कर्म फॉर विच वी आर सपोज टू सफर और एन्जॉय इन दिस लाइफ इज इन जनरल डिस्ट्रॉयड फॉर डिवोटीज बट स्टील यथ सुख दुखम दृश्यते समटाइम्स सम हैप्पीनेस और सफरिंग इज सीन इन द केस ऑफ डिवोटीज तत्र दुखम तू भगवत दत्तम ही सेज द मिजरीज दैट डिवोटीज सी इन देअर लाइफ आर समटाइम्स गिवन डिरेक्टली बाय कृष्ण नाउ समबडी मे आस वॉट सॉर्ट ऑफ भगवान इज कृष्ण दैट ही लव्स टू गिव मिजरीज टू हिज डिवोटीज but these are very token miseries token miseries means very small quantities of miseries so that the devotee remembers that you are still in the material world till the time you go back home back to godhead please do not start thinking that the wonderful joyous atmosphere in the temple is the spiritual world the spiritual world is in goloka vrindavan this is also spiritual world the temple is also spiritual world but the temple is a replica of the spiritual world created in the material world according to shri jiva goswami all replicas of the spiritual world that are created they are spiritual but they also have a touch of the material energy so they are partially in touch with the material energy although they are spiritual in nature so the temple is spiritual in nature it is dham abode of the lord but still it is in contact with material nature so sometimes the supreme lord also gives some token miseries to make one understand that although it's a blissful atmosphere in the temple there is such nice prasadam every day it is cooked fresh you get hot prasadam warm prasadam everywhere and you know there is so many nice devotees everyone is happy chanting hare krishna no anxieties at all in life but still some anxieties will be given bhagavad dattam krishna will give little anxiety to remind that please do not think that this is a permanent situation ultimately we all have to attain krishna prema love of godhead and then go to goloka vrindavan that is where no miseries will be present so some token miseries may be there and shri vishwana chakravarti thakur then quotes a verse to support this understanding he says yasya ham anugrhanami harishe tad dhanam shanai that krishna says in the shrimad bhagavatam and prabhupad used to say this about himself that if krishna becomes pleased on a certain person then that person becomes a devotee and then gradually he loses all his wealth and after losing all his wealth misery start coming to him but these miseries are basically arranged by myself so even those devotees who are earning money they may also receive some miseries from time to time because wealth is a source of all miseries previous verse yesterday's verse was about wealth and wealth 
ईच एंड एवरी एस्पेक्ट ऑफ वेल्थ इज मिजरी अर्थ से साधने सिद्धे उत्कर्षे रक्षण व्यये नाशोपभोग आयास त्रास चिंता भयम नृणाम दिस अवंती ब्राह्मण इज सेइंग इन द इलेवेंथ कैंटू वेल्थ इज मिजरी ऑन एवरी स्टेप अर्थ से साधने प्लीज से येस और नो इन अर्निंग वेल्थ इज देर डिस्ट्रेस येस सिद्धे आफ्टर यू हैव अर्नड वेल्थ इज देर डिस्ट्रेस येस उत्कर्षे इन इंक्रीजिंग वेल्थ इज देर डिस्ट्रेस येस रक्षण इन प्रोटेक्टिंग वेल्थ इज देर डिस्ट्रेस येस व्यय इवन इन स्पेंडिंग वेल्थ देर इज डिस्ट्रेस अ पर्सन अर्न्स वेल्थ सो दैट ही इज एबल टू स्पेंड इट बट वेन ही इज स्पेंडिंग इट इवन वेन इट इज गोइंग आउट ऑफ हिज पॉकेट ही फील्स अलास आई कुड हैव सेव इट नाउ इट इज गोइंग अवे फ्रॉम मी सो अरे एट लीस्ट स्पेंड हैप्पीली बट नो मनी विल नॉट अलाउ यू टू इवन स्पेंड इट हैप्पीली and what to speak of nasha if it is destroyed if it is lost then it is tremendous suffering if you were not able to spend it and if it is lost if you know if the wallet falls out somewhere on the street and you are not able to locate it oh my goodness yes <laughs> or you invested in precious stock market and suddenly there was a war between russia and ukraine and all the stocks went you know going down and we thought i i'll be very smart i won't invest in the stock market i'll invest in cryptocurrency and you know you invested in cryptocurrency and you were watching your cryptocurrency value go up 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 and suddenly if you're staying in russia the government banned all cryptocurrency no more cryptocurrency so you know in one day everything is turned to ashes yes <laughs> in india they just outlawed the old currency notes and we all had to stand in a big queue to get our notes replaced currency notes replaced so trasas chinta bhayam every aspect of money is anxiety fear but still we earn money you know why because money is the driving force behind this world so the shastras say if you are taking so much anxiety at least use that money for some proper purpose use it for some proper pu- there are only three things three uh, destinations where money can end up one is known as daan charity second is known as bhoga enjoyment and third is known as nash destruction these are the only three things where that we can do with money charity or enjoy it yourself or it will be lost destroyed so one who doesn't give in charity and one who doesn't enjoy himself his wealth ultimately gets destroyed and there is a very nice subhashita verse there is a very nice verse in the shastras which say that actually the most charitable person is the person who is most miserly the most charitable person is the one who doesn't give anything how come because he gives everything even without touching it with his hands i hope you are able to understand <laughs> when he dies <laughs> everything is ultimately taken up by someone else but he had an opportunity to give it with his own hands if he would have donated it with his own hands he would at least have the piety in his next life but he is so charitable he doesn't even want the piety so he gives up everything even without touching it with his own hands so it's a sarcastic comment on a miserly person what we should do is as long as we are alive we should give with our own hands we should distribute with our own hands shrila rupa goswami when he retired from government service he was working with the nawab shah government and when he retired from the government service he gave everything with his own hands he gave 25% of his wealth to the brahmanas his brahmana community he was from gaud saraswat brahmana so he gave 25% of his wealth to his brahmana community he gave 25% of his wealth to the vaishnava community he gave 25% of his wealth to his family and he kept 25% of his wealth as emergency for if he needs it later 
and that 25 percent was also used up in freeing his brother Sanatan Goswami from the prison. So in this way, Srila Rupa Goswami with his own hands gave up all his money. So that is what, that is the best use of money that can be, uh, that is possible in this world. Similarly, in this world, if we want to escape our prarabdha karma, our, the karma which is present in this life, bhakti yoga. But still some happiness or distress will be seen. Distress is given directly by Bhagavan for the devotees. And happiness, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says, happiness is a side effect of performing bhakti yoga. So all material happiness that the devotees see in their lives, it is not because of their previous karma. Material happiness for a devotee is not because of their karma. It is simply a side effect of performing bhakti yoga. So there is no karma for a devotee, especially for an initiated devotee. All karmas are destroyed at the time of initiation. So there is no more remnant karma for a devotee. Only the happiness and distress, the distress is given by the Supreme Lord or it is sometimes a small reaction for some Vaishnava Prad. And the happiness is ensured by Bhakti Devi herself. Bhakti Devi is like the mother who always gives happiness to the devotee and Bhagavan is like the father who is a little strict. Sometimes he gives a little distress. So it is necessary that one of the parents should be lenient and loving and one parent should be a little strict. And that is the best type of upbringing that is possible for a child. So Bhakti Devi is like the mother who is very lenient. She gives some happiness to the devotee. They get very nice prashadam. So when they eat prashadam, they feel very happy and satisfied. So Bhakti Devi, side effect of performing Bhakti. It's not our karma. And some distress comes. Oh, someday prashadam was not there. So I am hungry. So we should understand it was the father, Bhagwan Shri Krishna, who is reminding us that please don't think that every day will be a happy day here. In the spiritual world, every day will be a happy day. But here, you have to be a little cautious. So I will give you small reminders from time to time. And I will also give you the strength by which you will be able to tolerate all these difficulties. So Bhakti Yogi is in this way able to even eradicate his prarabdha karma, his karma which he is supposed to enjoy or suffer in this life. So, this is the text for today and this is what I had to say and I think we'll, it's 8.38 right now, so I think we'll have some time for questions and answers. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Hi, Hi, Prashad. Thank you. Very illuminating class. One technical question. Um, I never heard the Sanchita karma. Is that the same as ap- Aprarabdha karma? Yes. So Sanchita and Kriyamana means the stockpiled and what we are creating right now which will go into the stockpile is known as Aprarabdha. Okay. Because I, I, I yes. heard those Aprarabdha. Abra and abra, yeah. Those are the two described in Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu, Aprarabdha and Prarabdha. And Sri Rupa Goswami says both are destroyed. Yeah. for the devotee. Then in the Bhakti Rasamri Sindhu, he first takes up a prarabdha. A prarabdha is easy to destroy. So mm-hmm. then he quotes a verse from the 11th canto and uh, where Krishna is saying to Uddhav that uh, just as um, fire destroys any amount of wood mm-hmm. added into it, similarly, my bhakti destroys any variety of uh, a prarabdha karma. Karma ni kintu ja bhakti bhajam, yes. Then Srila Rupa Goswami takes up Prarabdha Karma because that's the, you know, Pradhan Malla. It's the main wrestler in the room. To defeat Prarabdha Karma is very difficult. Mm -hmm. Then Srila Rupa Goswami says, actually Prarabdha Karma begins from one's very birth. And what is the first indication of Prarabdha Karma? The family in which one is born. Mm -hmm. The race, society, family in which one is born. That is the first indication of Prarabdha Karma. Bhakti is able to change that. Then he quotes the verse, Yan nama dheya shravananu kirtanat yat prahavana. Even a dog eater becomes a brahmana on chanting Krishna's names. And you know what to speak of those who are constantly chanting and getting initiated. So bhakti is able to change one's very birth, jati. So that is quoted by Sri Rupa Goswami as an example of uh, changing prarabdha karma, which is otherwise not changed by any other process. Thank you. So, thank you.
Uh, one uh, editing point here, which I don't know if you noticed, in the translation to the verse. Right. These threefold miseries are miseries suffered by mental calamity at the hands of the demigods. Right. I think it's elemental. Yeah, elemental calamities. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> elemental, isn't it? Yes, elemental calamities. <laughs> And also, where is the where this verse? Uh, that I was thinking, "Tate no kompam come in. Right. That's yeah. So, although Shastra says that devotee has no karma, but uh, the devotee doesn't take that for granted, and the devotee still thinks, "Tate no kompam susami ikshamano bunjana evatma kritam vipakam." So that verse there use the term vipakam. Vipakam means some unwholesome activity has been committed by me and it is giving an unwholesome result so the devotee knows that the activities if the devotees are committing some unwholesome activities we don't call them sinful activities for an initiated devotee because for an initiated devotee there is no question of sin sin has been destroyed and every day when they chant they are washing off sins inadvertently although they don't think that I am destroying sins but sins are destroyed because of their japa but still because of some unwholesome activities some aparad is there and because of the aparad Krishna gives some suffering so the devotee thinks I have committed some aparad previously bunjana evatma kritam so my aparad I am suffering a result because of my aparad and still Krishna is giving some token suffering so hridvag vapur bhir vidadhan so through his heart, through his words, through his body, he continues to offer obeisance to the Supreme Lord. Thank you for reminding me, Krishna, that this place is not fit for me and that I should not commit more aparats. So I should develop Krishna Prem, I should develop love of you and I should return back to my original place. Jivet, one who lives with this mindset that even in the midst of suffering, actually I will follow your order, O Krishna. Mukti Padesa Daya Bhak. Actually, liberation is his inheritance. Liberation comes to him as inheritance. For receiving an inheritance from one's parents, one doesn't need to do anything. One just needs to stay alive. That's the only thing needed to receive inheritance. So, similarly, to receive liberation as inheritance, one just needs to stay alive with this mindset. That if there are any miseries that I am receiving, it is simply a reaction of some aparad that I have committed towards the Vaishnavas, towards the deities, towards Harinam, or towards the living entities in general. It is not a result of my karma. I will happily suffer for it, but while suffering, I will not become even a little bit unfavorable towards Krishna. This is personified in Srila Prabhupada. When he was Jaladuta, like he has given up everything. Like, you know, he's, he, came to the, uh, he came to the ship practically alone with 40 rupees. No, nobody from the Godiamat was there to send him off saying, best of luck, yes, Bhakti Vedanta Swami. No, he's alone with 40 rupees in his pocket. Barely anybody to send him off. And he lost everything, his family life, his business. He sacrificed everything. The person who sponsored the ticket said, you are going there to die. You know, what, sort, what, what are you doing? Still... He is keeping his favorability towards Krishna. He climbs on the ship. On the first night, Krishna tests him. And that is when he has two subsequent heart attacks. And even in such an unfavorable condition, Srila Prabhupada says, Whatever you want to do, Krishna, I surrender unto you. So, seeing that level of surrender, usually Krishna does not appear in Kali Yuga. Especially not you know, in a metal container. But Krishna appeared in Kali Yuga, in a metal container, simply because the devotee had successfully completed the most difficult test without losing their favorability towards Krishna. Yes. <laughs> Krishna usually comes with his entourage. Yeah, Krishna yeah. will appear in a golden chariot and say, you know, but Krishna appeared in a metal container. And Krishna kept his hand on Prabhupada's chest and said, don't worry. Henceforth, I will take care of everything. And then Prabhupada saw in his heart the most amazing scene that actually that all the incarnations of the Lord were driving the ship. 
and then it was when prabhupad came to the us he was so confident he used to say to the devotees is just a matter of time now is just a matter of time even though he had not even one temple prabhupad simply used to say is just a matter of time and everything will come up so that attitude i think is personified in shila prabhupad because in the most unfavorable circumstance he had the most favorable attitude towards bhagwan so mukti pade sadaya of course he is eternally liberated but with this attitude anybody who simply lives with this attitude he can receive liberation as his he can demand liberation as his inheritance from the supreme lord <laughs> yes prabhu yes prabhu ji Prakashna Prabhu, I just want to let you know there are six people on Zoom and three of them has questions. Okay. All right, this will just be one second. You know the pastime with, uh, around this verse with Sarvabhama Bhattacharya yes. and Lord Chaitanya. But Lord, if I understood, maybe I've been wrong, that the, the Lord Chaitanya said that because but Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, he did not want to hear Mukti anymore. Hmm. So he changed the verse. The right. Bhakti Bade. But Lord Chaitanya can, said, well, wait a minute, you, you, you can't change the verse. But Mukti Bade me is is lord lord krishna at the lotus feet of where there's all liberation so you're going back to god that's what, right, right? right. That's the idea. yes so shri sarvabham bhattacharya instead of saying mukti pade shri sarvabham bhattacharya was so devotionalized by the association of chaitanya mahaprabhu that he said i feel it should be better bhakti pade that is what he said chaitanya mahaprabhu said please don't change the shruti don't change a single syllable in the shruti the chaitanya mahaprabhu didn't like that a single word should be changed in the shruti chaitanya mahaprabhu said you take mukti as bhakti you interpret mukti as bhakti but don't change the word uh, mukti for bhakti otherwise if the precedent is set then in future everybody will start changing words in the shrimad bhagavatam and that we that is not appropriate yes to to elemental so yes <laughs> thank you for it yes Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you for a class, Prabhu. Uh the timing is actually very interesting. I took initiation last weekend oh. and I've been actually feeling light, really light. <laughs> like I removed the backpack of arrows of <laughs> Sanchita karma. Right. Uh but my question is still uh having said that, I did Ari Daivika, the three miseries are there anyway. So does initiation or bhakti yoga lessen the dhamma gods and lessen the threefold miseries as well right so does initiation lessen the effect of the threefold miseries actually after initiation it insulates you completely from the influence of all the karma but it is bhagwan shri krishna who personally decides how much of it you should receive so the between the demigods and you there is now an agent who is deciding how much of it you should receive now you may sometimes he may decide sometimes you should receive 100% of the huh? in this situation you should receive 100% of the happiness so you may get 100% of the happy some situations he may decide you should receive 20% of the misery so you may receive 20% of the misery but at the same time there is something you can do in order to overcome all of this that is if you become extremely blissful in your practice of bhakti yoga so from your side too you can do something that if you constantly stay happily absorbed in thinking about krishna in thinking about all the various joyous pastimes of krishna bhakti ras that the technical term is bhakti ras if you are enjoying bhakti rasa bhakti rasa is for you to enjoy it is one thing that the devotee can enjoy that is bhakti rasa bhakti rasa is for the devotee to relish so if you can relish bhakti rasa then most of these miseries you may not even feel in your life so that is something which you can do in order to eliminate them till almost 99% still something will be there so that is tolerable so but as long as the physical body is there they will be there but the best thing you can do is try to increase your blissful practice of bhakti yoga and your sadhana especially remembrance of krishna prabhupad called it international society for krishna consciousness sometimes the entire day passes and krishna is not in our consciousness <laughs> so <laughs> it's very important 
that at least once in a day we should favorably remember krishna we should read krishna book once in a day propad really recommended that every night devotee should read something directly about krishna directly about krishna this will be very helpful in our spiritual life so but my sincere congratulations prabhu on your initiation and what is your auspicious name prabhu ji ah ji yamuna jivan prabhu ki jai thank you thank you prabhu ji so there were some questions on zoom yeah. okay. uh, uh yes hari krishna hari krishna uh hari prashad prabhu please accept my humble obeisances prabhu my question is conditioned souls become morose and lament but sometimes pure devotees also become morose and also lament they sometimes even do cry so uh, based on this my question is what is the difference okay very nice <clears throat> conditioned souls sometimes become morose they lament in material life and sometimes we see pure devotees also become morose and they also lament what is the difference between these two the difference is very simple conditioned souls become morose they lament for mainly for material losses they wanted something but they did not achieve it or they did not want something and they achieved it these are the two reasons why conditioned souls lament or they achieved it and lost it yes so they wanted something they didn't achieve it or they didn't want something they achieved it and or they achieved something and lost it so these are the reasons in bhagavad gita it is known as raga dvesh very simple two technical terms are there raga means attachment to a desired result dvesh means repulsion from an undesired result so these raga and dvesh they cause lamentation for conditioned souls now the pure devotee is free from raga and dvesha but a pure devotee is experiencing bhakti rasa bhakti rasa means a pure devotee is experiencing a transcendental mellow in his heart in relationship to krishna now in if we study the technicalities of bhakti rasa bhakti rasa has a certain sab rasa sub category of rasa known as sanchari bhav sanchari bhav means transitory emotions one of the sanchari bhavas transitory emotions is khed lamentation so when the pure devotee is experiencing lamentation actually the pure devotee's lamentation is a sanchari bhav it is a transitory emotion which nourishes his sthayi bhav his predominant emotion towards krishna so it is not because of his raga and dvesha his attachment and repulsion to objects in the material world so we see sometimes devotees crying for krishna devotees lamenting that i could not see krishna so these are their sanchari bhavas transitory emotions which arise like waves and which which again merge with the ocean of their sthayi bhav which nourish the ocean of their sthayi bhav and it is not because i lost 50 dollars on the street you will not see pure devotee crying for that or i lost 100 dollars on the street so many times shila prabhupad sometimes you know uh, if there was any material loss prabhupad would say don't bother so much but if we could not build a temple for krishna then prabhupad was definitely oh i wanted to build many for many years in juhu prabhupad you know wanted to build a temple in juhu mumbai there was a big fight for it because the person who was wanted to give the land he was very unfavorable so sometimes prabhupad was thinking oh if only i could get it made so somebody may say what's happening why are you know you should be free of all desires hmm? but anya abhilashita shunyam anya abhilashita anya means other desires in the commentary shri jiva goswami explains that other means other than bhakti so in bhakti you are allowed to have all desires for krishna so when you have desires for krishna obviously it will generate sanchari bhavas transitory emotions such as kheda dejection so those are actually not material miseries those are in the category of bhakti ras so they have they are in a technically different category so that is the answer to yeah yes hari Prash- prashad prabhu if i may very helpful outstanding answer to my question thank you very much hari krishna thank you 
हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी आई होप यू कैन हियर माय वॉइस धन्यवाद प्रणाम जय श्री प्रभु पद प्रभु जी थैंक यू सो मच वन सेकंड फॉर योर वंडरफुल लेक्चर प्रभु जी प्रभु आई हैव फ्यू क्वेश्चंस प्रभु यू वर मेंशनिंग अबाउट द थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ कर्मा एंड स्पेशली रिगार्डिंग ज्ञान योगी यू वर मेंशनिंग दैट ही हैज ओनली प्रारब्ध कर्मा नो संचित कर्मा नो क्रिया मान कर्मा बट संचित कर्मा एज यू हैव एक्सप्लेन दैट इट इज अ स्टॉक ऑफ स्टॉक पाइल ऑफ कर्मा राइट प्रभु इफ वी हैव संचित कर्मा ओनली देन वी कैन हैव प्रारब्ध कर्मा एज फॉर अस माय अंडरस्टैंडिंग वाज इन इन दैट केस If the sanchita karma is not there for jnana yogis, then why why does he go through you know prarabdha karma, Prabhu ji? Okay, so yeah, so her question is that for the jnana yogis, I said that there is no sanchita karma. Sanchita karma, stockpile of karma is destroyed, but prarabdha karma is just one mug taken out of sanchita karma and given in this body. so if sanchit karma is destroyed why is prarabdha karma not destroyed for the gyane yogi so because the prarabdha karma was already given before he, the before he was born so it was already given to him before he was born and then after he was born he became a gyane yogi and later he destroyed his sanchit karma but still because he has to maintain his body so maintain his body as a gyane yogi he needs that prarabdha karma and that prarabdha karma it will give him miseries and happiness in this body and that the even for those who are liberated they call jivan mukta so for jivan muktas also they are living their last life in this world as a gyani yogi but they also have to go through the miseries and happiness that the prarabdha karma is affording them if we ask a gyani yogi can you change your jati jati means the family in which you were born uh, the the varna in which you were born gyana yogi said no sorry that cannot be changed by practice of gyana yoga no for all practical purposes the varna in which you were born that is the varna in which you have to stay if you are born as a brahmana you will stay brahmana born as a kshatriya you will stay kshatriya but if you ask a bhakti yogi can you change varna that is indicator of prarabdha karma that is the first indicator of prarabdha karma bhakti yogi says yes why not hmm? he quotes hari bhakti vilas and says that yatha uh, kanchanatam yati kansyam rasavidhanatah tatha diksha vidhanena dvijatvam jayate nranam just as bell metal turns into gold by alchemy hmm, by rules of alchemy applying mercury similarly any human being turns into dvija he attains dvija ness dvijatvam by the process of spiritual diksha so that is the answer to your uh, thank you so yeah, much prabhu prabhu ji yeah, yeah prabhu ji is it okay to continue prabhu i as long as dravida prabhu is okay as okay. yeah okay yes so i think we have to stop because uh, the devotees oh. here have some other engagements but uh, maybe some other program mata ji uh, you are from here mata ji no prabhu uh, you, you know uh, i am radha kunda dasi from portland uh, uh, prabhu okay okay so maybe when i come to portland uh, uh, sure. then we can meet and ask thank you so much mata ji thank you prabhu i'll pile up all my questions thank you prabhu thank you hari krishna hari krishna hari krishna prabhu do you want to take the question from the zoom only i mean temple devotees can go but the zoom devotees can there are many devotees in the zoom still Uh. Mm. So, so what probably pro completely up to you whether you want to take another question yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, do you have office no i'm fine you're fine no? yeah, i just then wanted to make one announcement yeah yeah yeah, but, uh, yeah please you can make an announcement then we can continue questions prabhu ji okay. so i i wanted to make an announcement that uh, hari parshal prabhu is here until uh, monday and uh, he will be speaking on padyavali from uh, shri rupa goswami which is a collection of uh, teachings that uh, our acharya has collected from the predecessors so and where, 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 where is that that's happening as part of a, a, a bunch of home programs i'm happy to send that uh, announcement thank you very much prabhu please thank go. you yes so uh, one more question from zoom you you are saying prabhu ji okay 
Maybe Paneshwari Mataji, you can go Mataji because I asked one more question. So. Paneshwari Mataji is not on the Zoom and you can go ahead. Oh, sure. Thank you, Prabhu. Prabhu, um, actually, you were mentioning about this very nice, wonderful, you know, session of Parabdha, all the karmas, Prabhu. And you were giving, in case of Srila Prabhupada, he's a pure devotee. <clears throat> and we can understand, actually, his faith in Krishna is very strong. No? And even um, question asked by Prabhuji that when we get initiated, all our karma burns up. But Prabhu, uh, and we also discussed that there is a lot of misery, even in a devotee's life, Prabhu. And especially in case of Sadaka Bhakta's life, Prabhu, um, you were mentioning that uh, I, as long as we do Nama Prada, Vaishnava Prada, and uh, different kinds of Apradas, then we also we will also have karma, Prabhu. But how is it possible, Prabhu, in uh, Sadaka Bhakta's life? We are not that pure that you know we don't make any mistakes. Even unknowingly or unknowingly, we might do so many mistakes, Prabhu. Even to Nama, even to Vaishnavas, you know, even though we don't want to do. In that case, actually, how do we understand, Prabhu? How long these miseries go, Prabhu? Uh, we are not pure devotees at the, uh, as of now. Even uh, in future, also, we do. We are not guaranteed that that uh, even though we are following nine process of devotional service, whatever is you know mentioned in the sastras, I mean, like you know, rules, and we are follow. We might follow the four regulative principles, and we may chant, we may do deity worship, and these aparadas, what we do for the deities, Vaishnavas, and even Nama. Uh, it's not in our control. We don't want to do it, but unintentionally, unknowingly also sometimes it happens and we have to suffer for that. So where is the end to this Prabhuji? When we will come out of all these miseries in our life and be blissful in the association of Krishna Prabhuji? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mataji. So I'll rephrase the question that uh, since we are constantly committing some aparadhas towards Vaishnavas, towards Naam, holy name, towards the deities. So, when will we finally come out of all of this? First and foremost, there are remedies to all the aparadhas given by the previous Acharyas. In the Madhurya Kadambini by Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, he has mentioned remedies to all the aparadhas. For example, let's take Seva Aparadha, aparadhas committed during deity worship. So, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says that one should try their best not to commit any seva aparads. But if there is any, any seva aparad which occurs during deity worship, then one can counteract the seva aparads by constantly chanting Krishna's name while performing seva. Then he quotes a verse from the 8th canto. Mantratas tantratas chidram desha kalar havastutaha sarvam karoti nishchidram anusankirtanam tava. Mantratas in the in chanting mantra there may be mistake tantrata in a ritual we may make a mistake chidram mistakes desha sometimes we may be in an incorrect place we may be in a desert which is not suitable place for worshiping bhagwan kala sometimes an in, inappropriate time sometimes we may forget to chant our gayatri and late night we are chanting gayatri arha vastuta sometimes we are offering things which are not so pure to krishna so these may lead to aparads but sarvam karoti nishchidram all aparads will go away if you do one thing during deity worship. What is that? Anusankirtanam Tava. Constant chanting of Krishna's names. So this is one way of reducing uh, seva aparads. So Nam aparad also, there are many remedies mentioned by Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. Vaishnava aparads also, there are many remedies mentioned. So we should take to the remedies, we should read these literature of our previous acharyas, we should take to the remedies and we should know that Simply remaining on the position of a progressing sadhaka throughout our life will not help. Gradually we have to move ahead and progress into spontaneous bhakti which is also known as Raganuga bhakti. Once Raganuga bhakti has been attained, then the devotee, he becomes very serious and fixed up. Most of these aparadhas are destroyed. But the devotee cannot always you know, make the excuse that I am a constantly progressing sadhaka. Constantly progressing means we should attain some progress after a few decades, uh, 15 to 20 years of sadhana, we should know what is the way ahead. And the way ahead is Raganuga Bhakti, which every devotee should aspire for, every Godiya Vaishnava should aspire for. So that is the answer to your query, Mataji. Oh, wonderful, Prabhuji. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I have last question. Is it okay? Ask or, or uh, no problem, Prabhuji? 
I think we'll take one last question then because there is also some other programs for the resident devotees here. Oh, sorry, yeah, Prabhu. So my last question is: You were telling about Adi uh, Daivika, Prabhu Ji. You know that also happens even in the body. Also, they take control of our body, right? Internal, internally, you know, body conditions also. So you have example. Uh, you have given an example of fire god. How you know digestible? We got indigestible. How about the other demigods taking control in our body, Prabhu Ji? Could you please explain? Yeah, Moon Chandra is hmm. in charge of the mind. so it is said that the moon it affects the mind of every person similarly mitra mitra is a demigod who is in charge of all the waste management of the body so there are various deities who are in charge of various aspects of the body so sometimes one of the deities they become unfavorable because seeing some of the previous karma of a certain person so then that person receives karma in in that particular area which that particular dt is taking care of so you can study all of these in ayurved shastra that which dt is taking care of which aspect of the body varuna is responsible for all the water element in the body agni is responsible for the fire element see ayurved is it gives principles of kapha vata and pitta these principles cannot be proved in any scientific theory but kapha vata and pitta are such subtle principles that if you regulate them you will yourself see a complete change in your body and existence so these are not to be proved in a scientific lab but these are to be observed by one's own self and put into practice they have been observed by the previous great sages so similarly all these deities they are controlling the various parts of the body and if one of these dt stops functioning because of previous karma then that particular organ starts failing that is the answer to your query do we need to do anything for to please this dt is because it might happen due to our previous karma i understand so what we can do in this birth to do we need to actually try to please the demigods in that way take initiation and finish off all the karmas <laughs> <laughs> थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच प्रभुजी थैंक यू माता जी थैंक यू जगत गुरु श्री प्रभु पाद की निताई गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि बोल